Hello, welcome back to another discussion with me. I am Mom Drea. You may go to YouTube and search for hashtag Mom Drea for all, all the other lectures. I will continue on with our remaining topics of this chapter, which is the web, the wireless revolution, and then the wireless technology. Again, you're tuning in with Management Information System by Kenneth and Jane Laudan. I will also be citing uh, some videos for you as visual representations. I hope you're safe and staying indoors. So on our previous topic, we talked about the global internet. I highlight that the web and the internet is not really the same. So the web is the most popular internet service which sits on top of the internet. Among the users, in the US, it's about 239 million people of all the ages, even my mom and my two-year-old cousin use it. So it is really the system with the universal accepted standards for storing, retrieving, um, formatting, and then displaying information using a client or server, server architecture. We know that the web is an interlinked connection of the websites, which are collections of web pages linked to a home page. So these pages are created using a text markup language, which is commonly called the hypertext markup language or HTML. Did, have you ever done a website or web pages using HTML? And then with this um, text markup language, we are able to transmit transmit to the user's web browsers by the HTTP or the hypertext transfer protocol, which is actually defined as the communication standard used for transferring the web pages. Um, web pages addresses or URLs, the uniform resource locators, are composed of the domain and then of the domain of the website and then the file locations of the individual web pages. How you how have you able to make a web pages visible to the others of the webs? Um, as I said, the web pages are like formatted using this hypertext, which is with the embedded links that connect the documents one into from each other. So now we go on to the search engines. What is search engine? So how do people find information of interest on the web? So the primary method is through the search engine, which today acts as the major portals to the web. Where is your initial points of entry or on the web? And how do you find information that, are, that you are interested in? Most common Google users, um, Google actually improved indexing and created pages, page ranking system. But if you may ask me, there's still those who use Bing and the Microsoft search engine that is quite showing a very good promise now. So search engines started as a simpler programs using the keyword indexes. Even now, most of us is using smartphones or mobile search, which is 20% of all searches in the 2012. The text discusses how big the web is in terms of the pages. 
Google itself visited and indexed the content of more than an estimate of like 50 billion web pages in 2011. But this does not include those that is on the deep web. Other estimates points to like 1 trillion web pages, but many of these are just duplicates. So we all, for example, your website is more likely to be among the first ranked by the search engines if it is used if it uses some keywords like lighting which is known in layman's terms rather than the lamps if most prospective use users or customers are searching for lighting it is also advantageous to link your websites to as many other websites as possible because search engines evaluate such links to determine the popularity of the web pages and how it is linked to the other content of the web. We use the search engine marketing, which is the major source of internet advertising revenue. That is how Google and other search engines earn their keep. Um, search engine optimizations is actually what the biggest thing that those who are in the field of digital marketing um, prioritized. Adver it, is, it means advertising your website and traffic to improve the rankings in the search engine results. Um, I remember before, I still don't have a physical location for my business in Sorsogon, which is a uh, so um, in the province, and then um, three of the those who are applying for student um, practical training or OJT knocked on my door and submit their um, resume, and I said, "How did you find me?" Um, and that reminds me that. The other night I was making a website and I pressed on the button for the search engine optimization, which put me as one of the accounting firm in the province of Sorsogon. And that allows them to find me. And this is one of those advantages for your firm and marketing industry. So in here, it shows the ranks, the major search in of the major search engines according to popularity or percentage of the total number of searches performed. Google is clearly the favorite. Google is the most popular search engine on the web handling 84% of all the web searches. Is this due to the superiority of their search engine's results or does it involve other factors such as their clean interface or their reach, which make their ad platform more valuable to advertisers? But Baidu, which is also a popular um, Chinese language search engine, if you, if you must know, um, is 7%. It is mostly used by the student, which is a foreign exchange student. Who is, um, English is not their first language. Now we go on to the other side, which is the social search. So social search is an effort to provide a fewer, more relevant and trustworthy search results based on the person's network of social contacts. This is now what we commonly use the Facebook like, the Google Plus one, which is um, in, in contrast with the top search engines, 
that uses the mathematical algorithms to find pages for your query, the social search website would review your friends' recommendations and their friends. So your past websites that you visited and then the use of the like buttons. So the, this is very popular now in Facebook. And if you go on for all the tags that you received or search in COVID-19 plus, um, it helps us um, be able to um, see the recommendations or your friends' updates, right? Um, one problem with this social search is that your close friends may not have like an intimate knowledge of the topics you are exploring or they may have tastes that you don't appreciate. It, also, it is also possible that your close friend don't have any knowledge about what you are searching for. They just share it in their timeline or they just like something or sometimes this is this become a source of fake news. That's the problem with social search. Um, another way for search engines to become more discriminating and helpful is to make search engines that could understand what it is we are looking for. This is this semantic search come to life, which is anticipating what users are looking for rather than simply returning millions of links and the goal is to build a search engine that could really understand human language and behavior for instance um if you are searching for your trips like uh, lake tahoe or mount Pulag, you are searching for a trip to japan if you do this search and the search engine will return basic facts about the, that trip or that place, the food to eat, the altitude, the average temperature, the map and hotel recommendations. So semantic search is like that. Um, this is originally designed to search on sex text document um now now we can already like put on a tag on our photos on our timeline or under our friends timeline so the softwares can now be able to create a digital facial print similar to a fingerprint so once a person is tagged on facebook it can easily um pick that person out up out of the group photos your name would be appear right so that's how it goes um another thing is the intelli intelligent asian shopping bots so in here it is the use of intelligent agent software for searching internet for shopping information this is very common for if you have an account in amazon lazada alibaba so every time you uh, finish putting or adding purchases to cart, shopping bots use this software, which it be able to um, filter purchases or that you are interested in and retrieve information about that product of interest. You can now be able to evaluate or see the reviews. So we go on to how Google works. You actually know how Google works. All I can add on for this topic is that um, at the foundation of Google's search engine, there are two concepts. 
the page ranking and then the indexing of combinations of words. So I can ask you if we, what's your favorite search engine a while ago? And why is it your favorite? Some other use ask Jeeves for simple questions, Bing, or if they're using Microsoft or Internet Explorer for the MSN, they use Microsoft search engine. So the reality of how Google actually works is the subject of many volumes and is beyond the scope of our book but this is commonly used and self-explanatory now let's go on to the next slide before we go to the evolution of the web i would like to show you how my two-year-old cousin and my mom who has been using the web and the internet of things to their advantage. As I mentioned, everybody knows of all ages, knows and using the web. Anata? Wi Fi. Wi Fi. Wi Fi. Alexa. Give updates of coronavirus in USA. According to Reuters, as of March 31, 2020, the United States has over 163,000 confirmed cases of COVID-19. The states most affected by the outbreak include New York, New Jersey, and California. There have been roughly 3,000 confirmed deaths due to the virus, with over 5,500 recoveries. For more information, try asking, is the coronavirus in Arizona? Or, how many cases of coronavirus are in New York? So in 1989, when the internet was created, we the goal is like to have a common unified information space where people can just communicate or share data. So in the beginning of the web 1.0, which is a red read only web the in it is just like an information portal wherein it have a static web pages or hyperlinked together as it become as it evolves more features um, includes such as, so what makes a website web 2.0 rather than the traditional or 1.0 site if you have shared photos over the internet such as Flickr or other photo site site like pinterest or posted a videos to youtube or create a blog or added an app to your facebook page your you've used some of the web 2.0 services um a blog is a popular term for web blog which is a personal website that typically contains a series of chronological entries newest to oldest by its author or and links to related website as i said um, web 2.0 is writable and interactive which is people us producing data not just a series of consuming data so microblogging used in twitter is a type of blogging that features short posts of 140 characters or less if you are an avid blog leader reader like, like me you might use an rss to keep up with the favorite blogs without constantly checking them for updates. RSS stands for stands for a really simple syndication or rich site summary. I'm gonna talk more about that. So in summary, Web 2.0 enables the collaboration, sh sharing information and create new services online. Among its features is interactivity, 
real-time user control and social participation or sharing the user generated content it's one of the common app which is the the twitter pinterest link in instagram youtube snapchat and among others so have you done to be have you done any blogging or have you been a like a blog reader such as google reader to read blogs if you have you might able to use the rss or in youtube you you're able to like click the subscribe button to pull in the content from their blogs to read them in one place or playlist add to playlist so note that wikis or wikipedia are used also in business to share information uh, twitter is one form of microblogging as i mentioned another example is tumblr uh, you know tumblr so to define uh, rss which stands for really simple syndication or which site summary pulls specified content from the websites and feeds it automatically to users computers so rss reader software gather materials from the websites or blogs that you tell it to scan and then brings the information from those sites to you rss readers are able to gather materials uh, are, are able to through the websites such as google and yahoo and they have been um, incorporated into the major web browsers and email programs we have microblogging and blogos blogosphere also so wikis in contrast are collaborative websites where visitors can add, delete, or modify content on the site, including the work of the previous authors. Um, this may be one, I tackled this on our previous um, chapter, which is very, become a very interactive source or brainstorming or collaboration. Um, social networking sites are sites that enable users to build communities of friends and share information or to your professional colleagues and friends also. Thus come the, comes the web 3.0. So the problem with uh web 2.0 um do you agree that we are really currently at the peak of 2.0 so a lot starts to come in a new apps like the tinder for the dating app uber or grab or lyft for the transportation so we kind of been evolving now but the problem with that is that all of these uh, services is isolated. So we are now entering an uh, an era which is Web 3.0, or we are entering or currently creating, and thus this is for the semantic or executable web this is also the artificial intelligence which garner really big um in big issue now what else um alexa siri google hey google so among other things i will also show you another video sorry which i don't understand so that's google responding so i mentioned kind of <laughs> so i just 
the keyword is hey google so my phone just said something sorry <laughs> that's how sensitive the web 3.0 here's what i found on the web oh, so this is a uh, example of a smart house where everything is connected and um with the internet you just have to feed it in there Playing jazz. Playing jazz. Smoothie. Making smoothie. Calendar. No meetings today. Remember, Tanleke at 9.30. Fire off. Fire off. Open door. Door open. Son, so ska vi sätta en till? Ja, ja. Open door. Wrong voice command. Open door. Wrong voice command. Open Open door. Repeat back. Open door. I didn't understand that. Hey, open door. Play on the floor. Sink on the floor. Sink on the floor. Open the door. Wrong open the door. Error. Hey, video. Put a rock. Open door. Open door. Door open. Radio on. Playing radio. And do lights. Lights on. Protein shake. Making protein shake. New York. Loading New York. Set speed. Four. Four. Six. Six. Sixteen. Sixteen. Four. Four. Sixteen. Four. Four. Correction. Sixteen. Hello. Hey, Good Down. You have to be very careful when using the Web 3.0. I think one of you reported about the Internet of Things before during the video case study. Um, Internet of Things is the Web 3.0 already. We're in um there had been an understanding uh, of the machines or the of the artificial intelligence they're be able to communicate which is the device from one device to another so web 3.0 is the promise of the future web where all this digital information all these contacts can be woven together into a simple, meaningful experience. The web of things includes the idea that our cars, our refrigerator, our smoothie maker, our heaters, our radio, and our air conditioning units, along with our, all the other appliances and buildings will be on the internet. Other complementary trends leading towards a future web 3.0 include more widespread uh, use of cloud computing and softwares as a service or SaaS business models. Ubiquitous con connectivities among the mobile platform also and internet access device. Before I remember, like the Tesla who have an autopilot that can drive without you steering the wheel. So, and other transformation of the web from a network of siloed applications and content into a more seamless and interoperable whole. So, um 
the goal is to reduce the human effort in searching for and processing information. It increased the synchronization, communication with the computing devices and communities. And as I said, the use of cloud computing and the mobile computing and collaborative effort. So cellular systems. Smartphones such as the iPhones, the Android phones you're probably using now, and the BlackBerry combine the functionality of a cell phone with that of a mobile laptop computer with a Wi-Fi capability. This makes it possible to combine music, video, internet access, and telephone service in one device. Have you purchased or upgraded your cell phone in that time, or if so, why? Imagine if you are using your old Nokia phone, 109, was that the one with the keypad before? <laughs> and then you are on a 30-day lockdown or more so that would have been uh, like a torture quarantine COVID-19 quarantine right so most cell phone users now today rely on a 3G networks a standard which first appeared in the early 2000s and then it was improved upon the last decade. So the 3G networks have mobile upload capabilities of about 144 Mbps, uh, uh, KPBS enough to email and some web browsing, but not videos. So 4G networks started appearing in 2010 it start first in the United States and they are also called LTE or long term evolutions network. The 4G networks or the fourth generation networks can be used to display of a video on mobile devices with download speeds of about 100 Mbps and the upload speeds of 50 mbps so we are now on the vlog or video blog era where everything is streamlining on youtube now rather than the reading cellular networks are evolving toward high speed high bandwidth digit, digital packet switch transmission uh, and then a broadband. So the the standards for wireless computer networks includes the Bluetooth 3802.15 for small small personal area networks or PANs, the Wi-Fi which is the 802.11 for the local area networks or LANs, and then the Wi-Fi maps, which is on the other page. The Wi-Fi maps, which is 802.16 for the metropolitan area networks. Do you have any Bluetooth or wireless devices they that you use now for computing such as um, maybe the keyboard, the earphones, or others. Speakers. Note that most Wi-Fi communications or wireless devices communicate with a wired local area network using an access point, as I discussed on our previous lesson. So Bluetooth, I want to emphasize about this, is the popular name for the 802.15 wireless network standards. Um, so it is the one that is for the PANs. 
uh, it can link up to eight devices in 10 meter area using a low power or radio based communications. And then for the standard, it is 802.11, which uses the access point is mostly the device. Uh, the access point is the Wi-Fi, which is device with radio receiver or transmitter for connecting wireless devices to a wired LAN. So uh, Bluetooth enables a variety of devices, including the cell phones, PDAs, wireless, um, etc. For example, here in this figure, you can see the use of Bluetooth for upper pan PAN. Bluetooth connects the wireless keyboards and mice to a PCs or cell phones to earpieces without the wires. It has been making appropriate for battery operated handheld computers also and cell phones. So most cell phones today are Bluetooth enabled, allowing you to connect to other devices like earphones and PCs. In here on the other hand is the Wi-Fi 802.11, which is local area network operating in a infrastructure mode that enables a small number of mobile devices to a large wired LAN. So most wireless device access are client machines, as you can see here. Um, the servers that are the mobile client stations needs to use are on the wired LAN. So the access points um, controls the wireless stations and acts as the bridge between the main um, main wired local area network and the wireless um, local area network. It is a bridge that connect two local area networks based on different technologies like your wireless network for your Blu-ray player so you can download internet movies from Netflix and watch them on your TV. Um, what else? The access point also controls the wireless stations. So have you connected to the internet through a hotspot at an airport, maybe a coffee to coffee shop, hotel, and other location? What did you notice? Was there any um, security? So what other drawbacks besides security that the Wi-Fi or the have maybe roaming difficulties, interference? So such as wireless phones, microwaves, microwave ovens or other wireless local area networks. Note that the wireless networks are, are based on the upcoming 802.11 and set this specification. This one solves the interference problems by using um, multiple wireless antennas in tandem to transmit and receive data and technology to create a multiple simultaneous radio signals. So what is this technology called? It's called MMO, which is MIMO, um, MIMO, multiple input, multiple output. It, it coordinates multiple simultaneous radio signals. So the hotspot is 
uh, that's one of his weaknesses, the weak security features. The Wi-Fi Max, which have it, which stands for worldwide in um, worldwide interoperability for microwave access, is the popular term for IEEE standard 802.16. So the reach this one solves the problem that the Wi-Fi have. So the range of the Wi-Fi system is no more than 300 feet from the base station, while, while Wi-Fi Max has the wireless access range of up to 31 miles and transmission speed of up to 75 Mbps cellular handsets and laptops with Wi-Fi Max capabilities. It is now common in the market. Um, mobile Wi-Fi mobile Wi Max is one of the fourth generation or 4G network technologies we discussed earlier. Yeah, and yes, it requires WiMAX antennas. RFID tags, um, I'm gonna s uh, just scan this because we already been discussing RFID before, even at the beginning of our lessons. The common here is our ID at the school. Uh huh. One of the two wireless technologies that is having an impact on our business now is this RFID, which is the radio frequency identification. Another example that I give before is the Walmart, the use of RFID for the inventory and then the supply chains. It is the tiny tags with embedded microchips that can contain the data about an item and location. It stored your data also as a student so that when you entered your data and information or when you scan it, tap it, the, your information will appear. So the transmit radio signals over a short distance to RFID readers. RFID readers, it is the one that send data over the network to computer for processing. To activate or inactive RFID, tags have batteries. The data can be rewritten. The range is hundreds of feet. For passive RFID, the range is shorter, smaller, and less expensive and powered by the radio frequency um, energy. Although the cost of RFID tags used to be too costly for widespread implementation, today the cost is about like 10 cents for a positive tag. So RFID is becoming most cost effective. So why do special hardware and software still needed to use the RFID. Use it so that we can filter to aggregate and prevent RFID data from overloading the business networks and system applications. Also, the applications will need to be redesigned to accept a massive volumes of frequently generated RFID data and to share those data with other applications. Major enterprise software vendors, including SAP and Oracle PeopleSoft, are now offer RFID ready versions of their supply chain management applications. This is also most commonly used for the automatic, automated toll collection and the tracking goods in a supply chain. I remember I was on a date and then we went to the um, 
fast track lane, not the cash lane for the tall. So the, we just go ahead. And then the card, which has an RFID uh, tag, is I kept it under my bag. So my babe just feeling happy because she's he saved money. Later on, the day after, he also received an email from the court asking him to pay seven point five dollars. So that's how RFID is very um, useful. Imagine how many cars will pass by that tall, right? You also don't need a lady, a tall girl, to work night shift, day shift, or 24-hour shift in that matter. So this is um, so how RFID works. You need a tag, you need a RFID reader, and a host computer. So does this poses any ethical problems? So, for example, if your genes have a built-in RFID chips, it's easy to track your movements. Likewise, if your student ID card has an RFID chips, So the wireless sensor networks or WSNs are networks of interconnected wireless sensing and transmitting data, uh, transmitting devices that are embedded into the physical environment to provide measurements of many points over the large spaces. So note that the wireless sensors are linked into an interconnected network that routes the data to a computer for analysis. This is sometimes used for the monitoring of the building security, the detection of hazardous substances in the air, like what is we've been using in the airport for the COVID-19 or those who have symptoms for COVID-19. It has the sensors. So they monitor the environmental changes, the traffic, or other military activity. The devices have a built-in processing, storage, and radio, radio frequency sensors and antennas. It requires low power, long-lasting battery, and ability to endure in a field without the maintenance. So here's the illustration, which has the lower level nodes and then the higher level nodes at work in a wireless sensor network. Um, you have to see that the server, that the data from the sensors is sent to acts as a gateway to a network based on the internet technology. And that ends our discussion and our chapter for telecommunication, wireless sensor, and wireless technology. Thank you for tuning in. And I hope you are doing well with our assignments and workbooks. I continue on for studying for the finals. God bless. Take care and stay indoors.